Lexical Resource is one of the four band scores that the IELTS examiner will give your task to score. Now, Lexical Resource just means vocabulary ability. In part one of this lesson, we will look at exactly what an IELTS examiner looks at to decide your Lexical Resource score. You might already be working very hard on improving your vocabulary, and if you are, well done, because that's actually the most important aspect of improving your Lexical Resource score. However, you also need to study effectively. Now, let me show you what I mean. For lexical resource, the examiner will check your spelling, tone, accuracy, and range. Now, let's say, for example, you need a band 7 in lexical resource, and you're already at a band 7 level for your spelling, for your tone, and for your accuracy, but your range isn't really there yet. So let's say you're about a band 6 for range. Now, if you're studying effectively, you will be spending all of your time on broadening the range of vocabulary that you have. By the end of the lesson, you will understand how the IELTS examiner determines your score based on these four things, and you will have strategies to improve each one of them. In part two of this lesson, I will show you my top tips for getting a high lexical resource score on test day. In part three of this lesson, I will show you my special strategy to make sure that you're improving your lexical resource score as much as possible before test day. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of the important information waiting for you in parts two and three of this lesson. My name is Lara Ryan. I was an IELTS examiner. I was an IELTS teacher at British Council, and I have over a decade of experience helping IELTS students get their dream scores. If you're ready to improve your scores, let's get started. The first area the examiner checks is spelling. Now, I'm sure you understand what a spelling mistake is, but perhaps you don't really understand how it can affect your lexical resource score. Firstly, if you have one or two spelling mistakes in your essay, that's not going to have a big impact on your score, so that's not much of a concern. If you make a lot of spelling mistakes, however, that could potentially bring your score down by a full band. Even worse, if some of your spelling is so bad that the examiner cannot understand what words you're trying to write, that could bring your score down to a band 5 for lexical resource. You might not be sure if you do or do not have a spelling problem, so I'm going to show you how to discover that for yourself now. So here I've pasted a paragraph that one of my newsletter subscribers sent to me into a Google Docs document. Now you can see there are different parts underlined, but it's the ones in red that we're concerned with. And if you just click on that, you will see it says hopeful. So there's just one spelling mistake here. Now, alternatively, we can use Grammarly. Grammarly doesn't divide up spelling and grammar in the same way as Google Docs does. So some grammar mistakes will be underlined in red and some spelling mistakes. However, with Grammarly, what you can see down the list of mistakes here is that they will tell you which one is spelling. So you can see here it says correct your spelling and it shows you the correct spelling of this word. Using Microsoft Word is another option and what you'll find in Microsoft Word is you can just click on the, you can right click on the word and it'll show you the options. But even better again, if we click review, spelling and grammar, it will show us the meanings of the various options so we can more confidently decide on which one we want to use. If you've made one or two mistakes like this, it's not that big a deal and you just need to make a note of these and learn how to spell them correctly for next time. However, if you're making a lot of mistakes, this does indicate that you have a spelling problem. And what you need to do is paste your essays into spell checkers regularly. Keep a notebook with all of the spelling mistakes so that you can learn them properly. And as you do this regularly, you will find fewer and fewer spelling mistakes as you move on. Now, a lot of students feel like working on their spelling is not a good use of their time. And I understand where you're coming from. You might feel like, wouldn't it be better to learn new words instead of going back and looking at these old words that I can already use correctly. But the thing is, if you have a problem with spelling, you're not going to get a high score until you fix that problem. So it really is a good use of your time to keep a spelling notebook, write down any spelling mistakes that you make, and spend time going through these regularly and learning how to spell them correctly. Tone is the second thing that the examiner will check in relation to your lexical resource score. So in general, all vocabulary in English will fall into three kind of main categories, would be formal, neutral, and informal. 
A task 2 essay is supposed to be a formal piece of writing. So if you're including informal words in your essay, the examiner will be forced to reduce your lexical resource score. The informal word that I see most often in task 2 writing is the word kid. Now, in a lot of contexts, the word kid is a perfect synonym for child. If you're in the IELTS speaking test and you use the word kid, that's completely fine because you don't need to speak in a formal tone. However, if you use the word kid in a task 2 essay, the examiner will note that you have used the incorrect tone. Just like spelling, one or two mistakes isn't really going to hurt your score too much, but the more mistakes you make, the more difficult it's going to be to get a higher score for lexical resource. There isn't any useful software to help us find informal words in our task 2 essay. So really the easiest way to get this done is to ask a native English speaker to look at your writing, give them a task 2 essay and ask them to circle any informal words in your writing. Now, if there are a lot of informal words, you know this is an issue. If there are none or perhaps one or two, it's not something that you need to concern yourself with all that much. If you don't have a native speaking English friend that you can ask to check your writing, you will have to use a dictionary for any words you're unsure of. Now, you can use any dictionary, but it is important that the dictionary shows you when the word is formal or not. A lot of dictionaries don't have that information. So let me just show you Cambridge Dictionary, which I'm a fan of, and I find that this Chrome extension is really useful. So if I just search for the word kid, it will open up a new browser window and I can see here that the word is informal and that's the information I need. If you're using a dictionary that doesn't indicate that information, you should not use that dictionary. I also have free live feedback lessons with my newsletter subscribers. So if you'd like me to take a look at your writing there, you're more than welcome to sign up. You can find the link for my website in the description below. Next, the examiner will be paying close attention to the accuracy of the vocabulary in your essay. In your IELTS writing test, this is what you need to focus on the most. There are two types of mistakes you can make with accuracy. Firstly, you can use the wrong word form, or even worse, you could use the incorrect word completely. An example of incorrect word form would be if I said, I'm boring instead of I'm bored. Now, the examiner would still understand what I'm trying to say, but enough of these mistakes will reduce my score. Using the incorrect word is a much bigger problem because if I say, I am bottle, well, it has no meaning, the examiner won't understand, and that's going to have a big impact on your lexical resource score. If the examiner cannot understand parts of your essay, this is going to be a band five or lower. For a band six, the main thing really is that the examiner can understand every sentence that you write. And it's actually okay to make quite a few mistakes as long as the examiner can understand what you're trying to say. As you go from band seven to eight to nine, fewer and fewer mistakes will be required. To improve your accuracy, you really just need to improve your overall ability with vocabulary. I know you're looking for an easier solution than this, Everybody wants the quick solution. Everybody wants the fast solution. If there was one, I would give it to you. The reality is improving your vocabulary score is going to take a lot of hard work and effort. And the only thing that will stop you from improving your score is whether you are willing to do that hard work or not. I'm sure you've seen YouTube videos or websites that claim you can get a band seven or a band eight by just using a specific set of words in your essay. But really, that doesn't work. What you have to remember is that the IELTS certificate is accepted in universities and immigration offices all over the world. And the reason they accept it is because the IELTS test is so reliable. If it was so easy to fool the examiner into thinking that you have a higher level of vocabulary, the IELTS test would be completely useless and nobody would use it. In part three of this lesson, I will be showing you how to improve your band level for lexical resource. So make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss out on that information. The range of vocabulary in your essay is the last thing that the examiner will consider when deciding your lexical resource score. For a band seven in lexical resource, the band descriptors say that you need to use less common lexical items. Now, a lot of students feel that that means you need to use vocabulary that's very rarely used or that very few people use in the English language. But really, that's just not the case. 
what's required from you is to use vocabulary that's specific to the topic that the question has asked you about. So if the question's about health, you have to have vocabulary specific to health, such as stress, anxiety, well-being, fitness, the health system, a healthy diet, obesity, mental health, clean living, and so on. None of those words could be used to discuss things like society or education. So that's what we're looking for is that topic-specific vocabulary that really indicates to the examiner that when you're asked to discuss a topic, you have the ability to discuss it in depth. Now, there are probably some topics that you can discuss in depth very easily, but then there will be other topics that you're not as comfortable with. Before your IELTS test, you should at least have enough vocabulary to discuss those most common topics that come up regularly. This will mean that you're much less likely to get a question that will result in a lower score for lexical resource. The more topics you can discuss, the better, but I'm going to give you a list of topics to help you get started. This is the same list that we looked at in my previous coherence and cohesion lesson, but I'll discuss each topic in more detail this time. The first topic that I would suggest is health. Now, it's important that you're aware you do not need to understand health in the same way a doctor would. So you'll never be asked to describe the finer workings of disease or how to perform a very complicated operation. Really, the things you'd be expected to discuss are things like the health system in general, how to stay healthy by doing exercise or eating well, maybe things to avoid like junk food or sleeping too little and things of that nature. For social issues, you might be expected to talk about overpopulation, homelessness, inequality, hunger, poverty and that type of thing. For environmental issues, again, you won't be asked to discuss something very specific. You'll just be asked to discuss in general how it affects the people, how it affects the planet and very basic concepts like that. Shopping. Questions about this are usually related to the changing trends in shopping, like shopping online or shopping in supermarkets or the differences between the way people shop. It could be the differences between older and younger generations or the ways in which men shop compared to how women shop and that type of thing. Parenthood. So this could just be questions about what's the best way to raise children, what are the best choices to make for a child, or the various conditions that can affect a child's growth. The media. Now this could just be discussing some aspect of how the media is changing because of technology or the various ways that media affects a society. Housing. You might be asked to discuss different types of housing or different locations of housing, um, you know, people's preferred accommodation and your reaction to those preferences. Transportation. You'll need to have the basic vocabulary to discuss concepts about public transportation and traffic problems or perhaps be able to suggest how to improve various aspects of a transport system. Education. You'll need to know the various names of the different education levels like primary, secondary or tertiary. You'll need to know the various different words that we can use for students and then the various staff members that belong in the different levels of education system. It's good to know the typical subjects that are studied and anything relevant to the education system in general. Jobs and careers. Now, this topic could be related to recruitment or equality in the workplace perhaps work environment and the various impacts that a job can have on health and a person's life. Lifestyle. This could be related to any aspect of normal life, like maybe traveling, free time, hobbies, the effects that culture has on lifestyle, maybe fashion or discussing some aspect of the time that we spend with friends and family members and just general things related to normal life like that. So those are all the various considerations that the IELTS examiner will have when deciding on your lexical resource score. If you enjoyed this lesson and thought it was useful, please click on the like button so other students can find it more easily than you did. Finally, please leave a comment below to tell me which part of this lesson you thought was most surprising.